This is a short video describing my buying experience and part exchanging experience using the website watchfinder.co.uk. You might be interested in this video if you're thinking about buying a luxury watch in the UK. Maybe you've been to a Rolex dealer and you realise you can't get the watch you want without waiting a long time, so you're looking to the quote-unquote grey market. When you start exploring these avenues, you will quickly realise that watchfinder.co.uk is the, the leading website for this sort of thing in the UK. And you then have to decide if you want to do this in person or do it remotely. And naturally, spending such a large amount of money with a remote uh, website, with a remote transaction, could fill you with a deal of caution. So I want to give you my experience and hopefully that will help put your mind to rest. And to do that, I'm going to use a combination of using a whiteboard to describe my experience and a little un unboxing video at the end. So the first thing to call out is uh, I've got no affiliation to WatchFinder at all. Uh, I don't work in the industry. I, I work in a I work in IT, something completely unrelated. I haven't been paid by WatchFinder to make this video, and I paid the retail price that was on the website for the watch. All right, so let's talk about timelines and the experience. So this is the watch that I wanted to buy. Uh, at the time, the price was eight and a half thousand pound. You can see that uh, it's, it's above the retail price, but that's that's normal at the moment with Rolex. You you can't get the even the semi-popular models for retail price at the moment. So if you want the watch, uh, like I wanted this watch, then you you have to sort of pay a little bit above retail price. But this watch was a, a twenty twenty model, came with box and papers. Uh, therefore, it's got three and a half years left on the the Rolex warranty. So let's think a bit about timelines. So the first thing that happened is in the middle of February, a um, bit of context is I already had a Rolex watch. I had a, a Rolex Explorer uh, 12472, which is this model here. So I had one of these, uh, which is also a 36 mil watch. Uh, what I found was um, after buying that watch, uh, I really liked the size, but I wanted something a bit dressier and I really wanted a date complication on my watch. I, I didn't like not having the date, even even though I carry my phone everywhere. The first thing I did was, well, uh, I emailed WatchFinder and said, can I sell you the Explorer? And then could I use the money elsewhere? And uh, surprisingly, the answer was uh, no, you can't sell us the Explorer at the moment because we already have a, a lot of these. And um, uh, what, what you can do is we can do a PARX against another watch, which I assume helps WatchFinder sort of keep their stock cycling. They don't want to be holding too much stock, which is understandable in the current market. So on the 28th of February, I said, OK, yep, yeah, give me a PAR exchange price. Uh, on my Explorer against the, the date just shown above here. Within 30 minutes, sales assistant called Harry Wilmot got back to me. So we exchanged some emails, he said, no problem, uh, give you a price. And um, the price that range that I was given for my Explorer was 7,000 to 7,500 pound. And again, that, that's, a, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, in my opinion, I think that's a pretty fair price because the Explorer today, I think, retails at 5,900. So you can see that, you know, despite me paying above odds for the Datejust, I'm getting a you know a pretty good price in comparison to the retail on the, the 1247, uh, 124270. Okay, so, but I was given a range. I was given 7,000, 7,500, and I said to Harry, well, you know, um, just base your assumption on the fact that my watch is pretty much as new, right? I hadn't really worn this watch. It was as new condition, full set. And he said, you know, okay, well, no problem. If it's as new, then the price will be seven and a half thousand. It will be the upper limit of that range. So, look, fine, you know, sort of took his word for it. 
Uh, and a sort of couple of days later, on the 4th of March, I paid a £1,000 deposit via the website, which uh, made this watch on the website go to sold and held the watch for me, so nobody else could buy that watch. One thing I would say is this is all handled via the Watch Finder website. When you log in, you get an account, you can see your sales, your part exchangers and the status of them. It's a very sort of professional experience uh, and definitely a step above in my uh, experience of using other dealers. There's lots of dealers out there in the UK and it's very clear that because of WatchFinder's scale, they've got this very robust account management system which keeps you informed throughout the transaction. Okay, so that happened on the 4th of March. What happened next? Well, on the 8th of March, I received a, a packing kit. So WatchFinder sent via DHL a packing kit to my home, which let me put my Explorer uh, watch inside. And it came with all the relevant protection, completely paid for, completely um, you know, insured to the full amount of the watch, adequate packaging, a complete stress-free experience, me selling that watch. And compare that to the experience I've had with, with other dealers, so a bit of context is, you know, I've been buying and selling luxury watches for uh, five, ten years now. And the experience you get with other dealers sometimes is, yeah, yeah, just send us your watch. Uh, and then you have to get to the post office, you have to package it, you have to take on that risk of sending it. And to be honest, in the UK, if you send something worth more than two and a half thousand pound, you can't use special delivery. Uh, or you have to sort of get additional insurance outside of the Royal Mail with special delivery, it becomes very complicated. Therefore, this is something not to be understated, how much this is worth when you're doing a part exchange. Okay, so you, you package it up and then you log back into the same watch finder portal and you arrange your collection. For me, that happened the same day, which was pretty cool. The DHL secure courier arrived later that day. And then... A couple of days later, you get an email saying, hey, your watch has been received and watch finder will then, ex then inspect it to make sure it's sort of as you, um, as you described it. And this all happens in the portal. You can, you can see here the sort of, this is the watch I'm buying. Uh, I paid a thousand pound deposit and seven and a half thousand pound was due to come from my Explorer. That's, that's how I paid for that watch. Okay, so on the 10th of March, I got that email saying, we've got your watch. The following day, I get a, another email saying, great, the watch is as you described. I confirm the £7,500 offer. And then this was on a Friday. So the weekend passes and the watch on the Monday, the date just that I've purchased, gets shipped via DHL. So the same sort of secure insured courier gets shipped on the fifth on the 14th on the Monday and it arrives on the 15th. Uh, what was also nice is when this got shipped on the, the 14th, the watch finder employee in the in the branch gave me a call and said, hey we're going to ship you this watch. You know we know it's a big purchase. Are you going to be in tomorrow? And I said yep no problem. So a you know, great sort of experience to this point. Now I'm going to flip over to a video and show you what you get when you buy a, a, a used watch from WatchFinder in terms of the box, etc. Well, first things first, it seems obligatory to do a, a wristwatch check on a video like this. Here we see Casio A168. Probably cost a fraction of a percent of the watch inside this box, but still an enjoyable watch nevertheless. Okay, so first thing you get is it arrives in a, a sealed, so a securely sealed DHL package. And this arrived when they said it would, and it was delivered by a courier to the door who sort of takes a picture of it to prove that it's been delivered. And then even though this is a, a used watch, it comes in this sort of uh, watch finder box, which is again sealed and got this nice decoration on the front.
inside the box, what do we have? So again, you know, even though this is a used watch, you know, it's packaged in a, a very professional way. What's inside the envelope? A receipt. It's got some personal details on, but uh, that's pretty boring stuff. What else do you get in the envelope? Uh, a letter of authenticity. So despite this having the original papers with it, sort of nice to have that secondary level of protection. Take some of this packaging away, so you can see it's packaged very well. This is slightly different to the packaging they use for, for sending your watch back, by the way. Uh, this is more traditional bubble wrap, whereas the, the kit they sent out to me originally was a, sort of a very well engineered uh, sort of corner protection system made of foam. Yeah, nothing else inside the box. I suppose from here on in this is going to be a fairly sort of normal uh, unboxing video now because this is just a normal Rolex unboxing but hey let's let's roll with it you might find it interesting. So you can see this is a used watch and it comes with the, the inner and the outer cartons. Zoom in a little bit there. Have a close look at the watch. So this is the Datejust 36mm 126234 and it's got a sticker on here so this is talking about hey if you do want to send it back and um, they've assured me for whatever reason if you want to send it back no problem at all which uh, you're sort of you, you, you have those rights as a remote buyer but it's pretty fair to, to ask for this sticker to remain on there. One of the nice things that they do uh, offer when shipping a watch is they ask you for your wrist size and I assume it's been sized for my wrist. So let's see how they've done. Let's see if they've done a good job. So I'm going to take off my 25 pound Casio and put on a Rolex with a retail price of about seven thousand pounds a day. Uh, they haven't done that well. See, so it's very, very loose. So I'm probably going to have to take another link out of that. Let's see if there's an easy link adjustment on this, which we can play with. So there is, but it was already closed. So I, I'm probably going to have to take one extra link out of that. But still, gives you an idea what it looks like on a wrist. So. That's the 36 mil date just on my 16 centimeter, six and a quarter inch wrist. So you can see the 40 mil would definitely not work on my wrist, but I'm really happy with how that looks. Spare links there, package nicely. What else do we have inside there? We have got the general booklets and yep, the warranty card, which is have the serial number on, so I won't show that. Original booklet. Hey, let's have a look at the overall condition of the watch. I've not really inspected it that closely. You see, actually, even though it's a used watch, still got the still got some of the stickers on. It's pretty cool. It looks like a brand new watch. As far as I can tell. See, it's still got stickers on the clasp there. It's quite rare to find that uh, with a, a new Rolex these days. Yeah, we will end the video there. Hope you found that useful. If you're thinking about buying a new watch online, my overall sentiment is I would buy again from Watchfinder. 
think it was a fair deal and a extremely good buying experience throughout. Especially when you consider this as a, for some people, a once in a lifetime buying experience of a high value item. Doing that remotely could fill you with some amount of uh, caution. And hopefully this video has put your mind to rest.